Is this for the thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, this is the first of, of an informational type meeting that we're going to be holding regarding the <coughs> town buildings in the town of Situate. As we all know, most of them all, or all of them probably, are in need of repair. So we we have some ideas that we want to bring forward starting tonight. Uh, we've brought Jeff Nutting in from Franklin uh, to be our facilitator in this, in this process tonight. Jeff's been a town manager in Franklin for over 10 years. During that time, he's built town hall, schools, a museum, public safety buildings, police and fire, uh, senior, center. senior center. Recreation. Thank you, help me out, Jeff. Recreation building, senior center. Uh, very, very similar to what we're facing here. Ten years ago when he came in, uh, his buildings were in total disrepair. Things had to be done. He came in, and now, ten years later, they're all relatively brand new. So Jeff knows what he's talking about, and that's why we're so thrilled to have him here tonight. Uh, he's former president of the MMA Association, so he's an expert in, 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 in town administration and town government. But having said that, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to bring Brenda Bowen up to the microphone. Brenda's the new chair of the Citrus School Committee, and she'd like to say a few words. A very few. <laughs> Hi. Um, I principally would like to um, introduce our incoming superintendent of schools. Uh, he doesn't start to July 1st, but he's on his own time coming to visit us from time to time to sort of get current on what's happening here in Situate. And his name is John McCarthy. He's come from uh, Freetown Lakeville School District where he's, he's still there until June 30th uh, primarily. So we have him here this evening. And I didn't know if you, know if you, want, if you wanted to say hello or... <laughs> Thank you, and uh, it's really good to be with you. Uh, starting off, I am not here officially yet until July 1st, as Brenda said, but I've been in your schools already, spent a couple of days here, and I've met all of the staff and uh, some of the students and some of the parents, and I'm looking forward to working with you for a long period of time. Uh, I, spent, I intend to stay here for a while with you. I, I love Situate. I spent a long time in Duxbury, and I lived in Duxbury until a, a few months ago and uh, now living in Plymouth, in Pine Hills. But, uh, but nevertheless, it's, it's, I'm glad to be here with you and I'm looking forward to many years in Situate and embarking on this plan with you. As, as you know, the school buildings are a big part of the, of the town master plan and I'm looking forward to working with town government officials to try to get the best possible use of our buildings going forward. So thank you, I'm glad to be here. John, thank, thank you very much and taking, thank you again for taking the time to, to come here and be with us tonight. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce the Board of Selectmen that we're here, John Danahy, Sean Harris, Tony Vignani, Town Administrator Tr Trisha Vincasey. And Tony Vignani will come up now and just give us a, a outline of what's, what's going to happen going forward. Cool. Can everyone hear me? This, this mic is actually just for the people watching on television, not for you guys. Um, but what I just want to do, you've read in the paper, I'm just going to give a quick synopsis in terms of the outline that we've been um, talking about for a while in terms of what the building usage will be. Um, this isn't a new problem. We've been talking about this for a long time when we were back on advisory five, six years ago. You know, this has been a need and what we've decided to do as a board this year is really to try and put it into action and put it before the town and really take a look at all of our buildings, not piecemeal, but in totality and see what we need to do um, to take it to the next level and get them improved and get the services improved that are inside of them. So um, the, the big picture thought process is and it's it's all has to be uh, based on engineering and get the approval of all the schematics and everything but the overall thought is that we would take town hall and a number of the other town departments and move them to gates gates is a very big building it has the storage capabilities and all the usage capabilities that a lot of the departments need right now we're departmentalized and we have departments all over the place some of the departments that we've talked about and you know we f may find that more can go there are 
all the administration departments, possibly the water department, the council on aging, recreation, um, um, even possibly um, school administration could go into uh, gates and um, and utilize the space there. Um, you know, as Joe said, you know, you could take every department and put it in there. It's a very, very big building. Um, recreation could hold programming there. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that can be used in that building. Right now we've done some work on it and we found that the building is structurally sound and we're getting work done now that will actually say what, what can actually move in there. How many square feet do we have? How many square feet do we need? And what departments can move in there? Um, and we think that there'd be better use of, uh, of departments, closer communication, and like I said, more centralized government. Um, the other thought process would be that you take the police and the fire department and you move them someplace into the North Situate. Um, closer towards the west end. The piece of property that we're thinking about is on Manlot and um, 3A, um, a portion of the Ellis Estate there on the corner there. Um, they may find out that we have a better piece of property, but the biggest need that we have there is that we want to get quicker service to the west end and to the mined area. Again, this has been discussed for decades. Um, we've talked about putting fire stations in different places around town, but that is the main goal of that thing, is to bring two departments together, take care, uh, improve our technology, improve our usage, um, and get better service to that part of Situate in terms of response time. Um, and the third piece of the puzzle would be to build a new middle school um, on the current town hall property. Um, it would be a, a new building. Uh, from scratch and it would be more of a campus effect in terms of its close proximity to the high school in terms of utilization of the other services there, the fields, the bus systems and all the other um, property around there um, and again it would be more of a campus situation um, and the funding of that would would be uh, supported by the MSBA so um, again we don't know where, we don't know what it's going to look like, that's where the engineers will come in and say it can fit over in this corner better, it can fit over in this corner better, but ideally what you'd be doing is you'd be taking, taking operations from Town Hall now, moving some to North Situate, moving some to Gates, and building a new middle school there. Um, the school department would be involved in terms of what the middle school would look like, how many grades it would be, um, you know, the size of it, the administration for school department could even go there if, if so be. But um, again, the details of it, we don't know yet. That's what we're working on now. That's what we had the um, article that passed at the last town meeting for $375,000. That is, that's what that is going to be doing. That money there is going to be finding the answers to these components so that we can actually move on this project pretty quickly and find out, um, A, does the town have the appetite for this, and B, um, to move it along so this isn't a, a you know a, a 20 year project that is actually a short term um, impact rate on the town. Um, did I miss anything guys? <coughs> yeah I mean <coughs> the thought here is to get some brainstorming going on and get some other ideas in. We're really not going to talk about specific components of it but um, you know this is a series of meetings that we can get feedback from the public and find out what your ideas are and, and incorporate it into these really early stages of the discussion. So at this point I'll pass it over and uh, we'll be here to, you know, to field the questions as it go on. So you had a question yes. before we begin? Does any of that $375,000 allocated anywhere? anywhere? <coughs> Not yet. No, no, sir. So thanks for having me today. Just by way of introduction, I'm Jeff Knight from Franklin. Um, I'm here. I don't have a vested interest in the outcome, per se, other than we have a effect. Everybody has a chance to be heard that we got some ideas and some suggestions. <coughs> Maybe at the end of the night we can walk out with a game plan that the community can support. Uh, by way of background, uh, I started in local government 35 years ago. I've been a selectman, a finance committee member, a school committee member, and a member of every other known committee in the free world. Um, done facilitation workshops for 25 years and been a town manager for the last 20, the last uh, 12 in Franklin, where we faced a very similar situation to this, where we needed a new municipal building, a new fire station, a new senior center, a new DPW, a new, uh, recreation facilities, while we were building two schools, uh, and we just approved a new uh, high school that will be uh, put under construction. So, had to kind of go through the same process of timing and, and fairness and equity, and how do you build a, a coalition to get things done, um, and so that's what this meeting really is being talk about is is this the right plan I applaud the selectman for bringing everybody forward here you might walk out with a completely different plan but if you can walk out of here with a plan then the, then the next step is you can 
take the 375,000 says, does this make sense? What are the pros, the cons? What are the financial implications? Tonight, we're really not gonna talk about finances because you need to know what the options are before you can understand what the costs are. I can tell you, they're expensive. Um, in my experience, uh, two things happen. The problem doesn't go away and it costs more money. Uh, so the issue is if, if, if the community is ready to move, the sooner you move, um, the, the, the quicker you resolve the problem, the less expensive it will be in the short run. Obviously, we have all-time low interest rates. In one way, we want the economy to approve, but in another way, it would be nice to borrow at 3%. So, um, well, so the, the game plan here is a second to put out a proposal where, I think, and I don't know the sequence, but, uh, Put, put a new public safety facility up, uh, potentially build a, a new middle school and renovate the gate school to cover all the other issues, except for the library, uh, obviously, which has its own um, uh, location already. So my job then is to ask people if they want to make comment, ra uh, raise it, please raise your hand, uh, respect people's uh, differences of opinion. We're all, you're all from the same community and you're gonna walk out of here as a community need to work together. Um, no matter what plan you come up with, it's going to take time. There's no instant answers here. I can tell you that our plan took about eight years to get everybody uh, in the front door. Um, and you know, just if you go through the MSBA process, you can count on five years. Uh, unless you know somebody that we don't. Uh, and, and because they only have so many dollars to dole out, uh, and they have to go through that. So, with that, any questions about what's going to happen here tonight? If not, we'll take the first question. Ma'am? Uh, yes, Mr. Rignani referred to determining if the town has the appetite for this plan. I'd like to know how that will be determined. Well, I think, the, I'll let him answer, but I think there's two questions. Is Does the town have the appetite to, to uh, vote on a plan? And the other one is the financial perspective. But. Exactly. <clears throat> I mean, at some point, a plan is going to come together and come before the town, and there's going to be a price tag associated with it. And as we all know, overrides in this town and overrides in any town don't pass easily. So at some point in time, it's going to go before the voters, and the voters are going to vote as to whether the plan is accepted or not. And I think everybody knows you got to go to town. You need a two-thirds vote <clears throat> before you do anything. So, you know, again, the issue is if, if everybody is on the plan, and all the voters at the town meeting obviously get a single message. But that's a little easier than if there's five different plans and everybody's competing for the same for the tax dollars. So you know the idea is, can you come up with a, a big master plan for these facilities, bring it to the voters, both at the town meeting and then to uh, debt exclusion, uh, and ask them to accept it. Obviously, you pay for it over a long period of time. Schools, you can pay 25 years. Everything else is 20, uh, but they'd be phased in as the building's going. So someone would ultimately do a financial model as to what the cost implications would be in, in what year uh, if this was obviously to get voted on. Ma'am. Is this building included in that plan? Is this building? I don't believe it's included in the, in the selectman's proposal, but did you have thought? Because I know there's a deed restriction on, the, on this property uh, that can only be used for certain uses or temporary uses if I, so. I don't believe there's a permanent uh, plan for this building because of the deed restrictions involved when the town acquired it. So I know that they've talked about temporarily using it for certain spaces or swing space, but uh, I don't think that's a, I don't think there's a permanent solution to this building unless I understand. Ma'am. I was just wondering if we're looking at the uh, raw concept Anybody have an answer to the high school issue? Just about the well, reasonably good shape. Is it, I don't know uh, what year it was built or upgraded. I mean, I can I can answer pieces. Of, I mean, the, the high school was repaired and and um, enlarged just about seven or eight or ten years ago. And the impact of this plan will have an impact on the high school because you're going to be taking components out of it. If you take recreation out of the high school, if you take the administration out of the high school, that's going to free up space there and allow that to expand as well as, you know, have better better space for those other programmings that are in that, that have been really put in that building because there was no other space to go. I wouldn't say that. 
Um, it's, uh, it's definitely our concern to maintain them and improve them. But as we start going down the path in terms of what we're going to do and what space we need, let's say, for instance, the best school model is a, and I'm just making it five through eight program. So it's no longer just a seventh and eighth middle school, it's a five through eight. Then that may free up space where you don't even have to use all four elementary schools. You know, that's kind of the work that we're figuring out now um, in terms of what space do you need and how is all this shifting around going to have an impact on all of the other buildings. Um, and obviously we, the, the most recent building is the brand new large elementary school of Jenkins. Yeah, if you question that. I can tell you one of the, the byproducts of our plan would be merge the school and town administration in the same facilities. And what a you know, huge benefit that was, the communication, the teamwork, the budgeting. Uh, we share IT, we share uh, purchasing, we share a lot of things. And so I, I know that was mentioned as a potential, but it has a bigger bang for the buck than just relocating um, offices. It's a great way to build a, a team um, look towards the future. Yeah. I um, first just want to say I'm really excited that this is all starting and um, it's great. One thing that you just said was, you mentioned eight years, okay, another mention was five years. I just want to put out there that I think throughout this whole process, we need to keep trying to move it along as quickly as possible. We need a new middle school sooner rather than later, later being eight years. We need a new senior center. So the only tweak I guess I want to put on the table to this, to this plan is that, um, Every, everything should go in gates. We need a new middle school. But instead of putting the new middle school where Town Hall is now, what if we look at putting a new middle school on a, a different location? I know in 2004 they did a space study and they listed 27 different properties back then of where a new middle school could go. So I, I'm just suggesting we look at one of those for the new middle school. Then you can kind of more quickly move all the other pieces around, get that built, and then the big benefit there that is potential is look at selling the property of where Town Hall is now for businesses and get that revenue into the town and ongoing on a So an alternative location so. for the school, that was your major point, we'll put up a okay. major Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, along the lines, I was just wondering if, there, if it was feasible or if you looked at actually building a brand new high school and taking the middle school and putting it into the current high school so you have a, a, a nice a newer facility for the high school itself. Just curious. Uh, but as an alternative, I think the issue you're going to have, you know, the MSBA process, they bring every school and they tell you what condition it's in and how to get it through the system if the high school is in reasonable shape. That's a lot harder road. Uh, because they say, why are, we, why are we doing it in this building? Nine years ago, you renovated it. So um, the fewer challenges you have with the MSBA, the easier the process goes, having gone through it uh, under the old system and now the old new system. Well, put it down as an alternative. We'll list in all the alternatives, and obviously, ultimately, the school, we need to weigh in on any school issues. Uh, as well, folks. Uh, we'll go down the road here. Yes, sir. From a tax revenue standpoint, how the city can compare to the town of Franklin? Uh, we're broke like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clarify your question. Like, obviously, it's everything to be based off the taxes that are earned in the town. Right. And I'm just wondering, I don't know a lot about Franklin. I know there's a lot more retail there than there is here in Sidgwood. Do you guys have a higher? We have 80 20 percent, 20 percent business, 80 percent residential. Uh, we struggle financially just like everyone else. Uh, but. Uh, Again, back in 2001, um, it was a huge pent up demand. The town had grown from 20 to 30,000 people in about 10 or 11 years, and all the facilities just couldn't accommodate. Things. And we made a decision uh, how we, you know, this, we were going all in, and this is how we were going to finance it. But uh, that doesn't mean we still don't struggle like every other community sure. to figure out how to make things. That's going to be in perpetuity. So, yeah, it's not so much an apples to apples comparison. <coughs> Uh, in the, except the fact that you know we had all these, we had five major decisions to make, and they made it all at once. You know, we, you know we're going to fund these, and this is going first, and this is going second, and this is going third, and everybody, you know, some people waited, unfortunately, but 
you know, if you go into Franklin Senior Center today, you say, oh, oh my God, this is the greatest thing, or our eyes, or our facilities. I think everybody's proud of the end result, and you just have to be patient. Okay. We'll get, we'll get on the road, and they'll get over Pardon my ignorance, but could you clarify what the MSPA is? So I'm sorry, the Massachusetts the School Camp. Building Authority is, um, building, has been building schools since 1949. They reconfigured themselves dramatically in 2007, I guess. And if you want the state to help fund the portion of your construction of your school, you have to go through this very um, long process. We fill out the forms of the statement of interest but, and what you want to do. Then you have to wait to get on the list because the MSBA is funded by 1% of, of the sales tax. So um, obviously with sales tax income down, they have less dollars to use and a huge backlog of um, schools because they're all aging out. And we were in there getting our approval and the guy next to us, the superintendent from Melbourne said, oh good, I've been waiting five years to just get to this meeting. Mm -hmm. So one of the things the community has to decide is if you want to go quick, you can't get their money because it will take you five years um, uh, versus, but the, the next to be a fiscal decision as to what your reimbursement rate is and how, you know, is that worth it? So that's part of the decision making process. If they will pay for it, you have to be patient. And, and they have very strict rules on how the whole system works, and how, much, how big the classroom is going to be, uh, how, how big the custodian's closet is going to be. It's very uh, uh, intense and it takes a lot of time. And they pay for the whole thing? No, no, they'll, your town, every town has a different percentage. Uh, you, have, you have a core percentage, and then if you build a green building, you get uh, good, uh, you get extra money. If you maintain your public buildings very well, you get extra money. I don't know if that's gonna. Uh, uh, and and then if you do a renovation versus a model school versus a stick built school, so the formula varies depending on each community. Um, I don't know the other base number. It's about 40.68. Yeah, about 40, 42 percent. And every, and every town's there. I mean, you'd get a couple extra points for some of the things that I mentioned. So it could be substantial. Sir? Yes. Uh, I just can't believe that we're talking of tearing down three buildings to build a school. When we had the plans drawn to build a school on the Ellis property, we have a brick area across the street from the Ellis property that they talked about connecting the fire station that they proposed to build on 3A and move the one that's at the corner with the town hall. A few years ago, we re-roofed the school and then tore it down. We have made some awful, awful expensive errors. We let the senior high school deteriorate to the point where it was disgusting and they finally have corrected it, hopefully keeping it up to date. But to tear down three buildings and relocate maybe into three different places, I heard you say that they maybe could all go in the gate school. Uh, well, the, the it, proposal was that the police and the fire would go to a public safety building in one location that they proposed something up in the north and that the town hall would go into the gate school. So it would be one new facility and the renovation of an existing facility under the initial proposal. When they proposed the fire station on Manlock Road on 3A, they can't get a perk there. And the unbelievable thing is that right next door, they're building a whole series of homes and they got perk. But I heard that they all got a perk down near the water tower, which means they have to put the sewer line under the 3A, again, a super extra expense to do same. And they have the plans drawn. Now, I, granted, they have to update them for the Ellis Property School that was proposed. So let me ask you a question. Um, this is their, their idea. What would be your idea? How would you, how would you change what they propose? <laughs> well, you put it up so we could. So they're proposing a new middle school yeah. With, with a certain grade configuration. Right. Um, there's been a suggestion of one location, another suggestion to look at other locations. We're proposing um, that the gate school be renovated for school administration, town hall, council on aging, recreation, water administration, and then, and, and then a public safety building. 
and what would you think would be a better or a different um, because if you're trying to get ideas? Well, uh, I, I don't, I'm not yeah, trying yeah. to say that I know what they should do, but I am trying to say that they that it goes a little slower to be talking about tearing down three buildings to replace it with a school. Granted, they would get the facilities of the, uh, the sports closer, but the Ellis School isn't, Ellis property isn't that far, and they could get the kids the same as they must do now. Okay. Uh, that is it. Excellent. Would it make sense to put up to consider the Ellis property? Yeah. 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 That's probably one, put it under the location. Yeah. That's probably one of the other. Okay. Anybody on this road? No. Yes, sir. Uh, how long did it take the Franklin community to implement, implement a program? Uh, it took us about eight years to do it. At least eight years. The town of Situate, way back in, I don't know, I could be wrong, but somewhere back in the eight, early 80s, maybe as early as uh, 75, did a study to uh, <clears throat> of all the buildings that situate, because we were going to go ahead with a plan, the overall plan. Now that's a considerable time ago. I don't think that anything that was implemented in that program, or said in that program, was implemented except for the sale of two buildings, which is what it was all about. Um, around that time, uh, the junior high school had a new plan that was to be put up on the uh, Ellis property. <coughs> I think that was 74, 75. The plan has existed here in Situate since that time. Granted, it may not uh, comply fully with what is required today, but I think it would be very, very close. When you say plan, talking about location plan or no construction plan i would say that um given the building code you can start from scratch not necessarily sir i'm an architect also so not necessarily okay so but, but is your point the location that you'd like to consider no what i'm suggesting is we've gone through this kind of procedure before okay and as i said the only thing that occurred was the sale of two buildings well you know what? What's behind us we can't fix. That's correct. I think the That's why I asked you how long you would think it would take to implement this, or how long really in Franklin, how long did it take? I mean, there's, there's, there's several factors at this point. Are you going to go MSPA route? If that's one route, then I can tell you it's going to take some time. That's a decision you'd have to make as a community. The second uh, factor is where is the school going to be located? Um, if it's going to be located uh, on this proposal, then you got to get the public safety buildings out of the way or get them going. So part of it is what's the sequence uh, of events? So you don't know the sequence until you determine the ultimate location of uh, the school and, and the public safety building. Jeff, can I make just one quick point? You know, you bring up a very good point there, but that was, you're talking about 30, 35 years ago where the same exact problems that we're talking about tonight Absolutely. existed. That's so, what I'm saying. Right, so we didn't solve them back then. That's right. And now we're dealing with buildings that are 30, 30 25 years older, Absolutely. and that's really why we're here. So you bring up a good point. I have a question. Um, just from, um, who has identified or have we consulted with that has told us that the acreage around town hall um, adequately meets the requirements for school. Because we throw this idea out there, I don't know who we validated that with. The only thing I'd say is there's a lot more acreage than just where Town Hall sits. It goes all the way around, back by the playground, even behind the playground over there. So there's a lot of space. You know, the building may not sit possibly right where Town Hall sits right now. That may be something else. That may be a field or something, and the school may actually sit way back over to the right. Um, and that's what we're looking at now. That's where the MSBA comes in, I believe, and gives you kind of cookie cutter buildings that you can work with and gives you the square footage and how many parking spots you need and so all of that. Is that the softball fields off the table then? Well, the, the reason why we, when we approved the softball field it was on the condition of once we figure out what this will look like. So the softball field may end up being where 
the police station is, as opposed to over where they thought it would be. Yeah. I just had a point of clarification on that gentleman's um, question. Did you mean that from the, the time that Franklin started the actual building no, process? From the time they voted. From the time, okay, so you had a period of time that you did this type of... So they voted it and then we had to start getting plans for construction and, and we sequenced the buildings. Um, so I, part of our timeline is it, um, we wanted to spread them out a little just from the financial impact right. perspective. And uh, we did try to get a grant, for instance, for our senior center. We saw that get delayed two years and finally said, we're not going to go for the grant, we're just going to build it. So that delayed it a little. Uh, All right, I just wanted to clarify so that from idea to opening the front door, you said was about eight years. Well, I mean, right. for all the built, for all the things that got done. Yes, that's, that, that's what I meant. Right. Add up to 15 years. No, 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 no. Because some of them are actually going at the same time. Um, but you know, if you start a school project, just to, just if you start it from scratch and have to get an initial uh, cost estimate with an uh, architect firm, and then you're going to go. It's going to take you. If you start it tomorrow, it can take you three years. It's nothing that went wrong um, to, to do something. So it, it's a time-consuming public process. Uh, sir, in the back. Yes, I'm in the back. I'm a suggestion, like Tony said. I think uh, a good first step. Speak up a little, please. Anthony Antonello. Thank you. Remember, the Bayou Board also worked for the town for 35 years. I suggest that what you do is get a copy of all these studies and reports. They're all available in the archives in the town hall. And take a look at them. I think you could probably glean some useful information. You spent a lot of money preparing these reports and studies. I, I strongly suggest Mr. Norton knows we have dozens of studies and reports in the town hall that were done by various boards and committees. So look at them all. All of them. A little history goes a long way. That's right. That's a great suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, as, an, as an another cost saving thing, I was thinking why not, I mean, take advantage of the whole online community everywhere in the country, everywhere in the world, and issue a challenge. I have a contest where plans can be submitted by like graduate students or PhDs or college students. Plans that for what, the, 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 game, the game plans? The game plans and architectural plans and all the things that cost like the zillions of dollars. Well, you could have a game plan, but under the uh, bidding laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, very specific process you have to go through um, when you're getting architectural plans and building plans. So you could have someone, I think what what this group is trying to do is what you just suggested. You know, what's the game plan and then what's the cost involved in it? So you can certainly reach out. Um, but the downside of that is that, that would take more time. Five or six foot foot and, then, and you really couldn't get architectural plans unless people came in and studied the building. So I think the community is a better place to do that in the short run than other folks. Ma'am, and that's your. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know you said that the library is a separate. Well, it's on the board. Yes, but my question is. Uh, and I understand, uh, as Mr. Vignani said, that then they would come back uh, to the voters because we have to approve it. Obviously, there's a financial burden there. And if I read in the paper correctly, the library has been awarded a $5 million. They applied for a $5 million grant. It's a $12 million project. The next $5 million is uh, up to them to fundraise from the community, and then they come to the town for the last two million dollars. So, if that is correct, that in these next years, town will be uh, asked for a two million dollar amount for the library, and and the town's people will be asked for money to see this project. So, is the question is, that, is, is it all in? Correct? Yeah. I think, I think our, our plan is. Two different things, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. I think what we're trying to do is put it all together. I think it's going to be one big plan, and the library would be part of it as well. So that 
you know, we're not going to come back with an override for this, an override for that, an override for this. We're hoping that the timing comes together so that it would be one plan. And the library's $2 million component of it would be, piece, would be the, a piece of it as well. So that's part of when, you, when we voted the $375,000? Well, their plan is actually done. They've yeah. done the engineering and stuff on no, that. I, I mean, but you gave a, a like a top line for this <clears throat> project that you talked about. Was that two million dollar additional money part of that? Uh, six, six well, I, I just said that the town passed a three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar item that we're going to start doing the schematics and the engineering of the right. whole process. You, wasn't there a like a top line that you had a guesstimate of what this whole project might cost the town? It would no, I haven't. In it would be just that a complete guesstimate, you know. I, no, I, I, I thought there was a number at that time. But if no, no, that's 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 that was asked correctly, if, if they're going to go ask for X million dollars, they would include the $2 million from the library. Is that the thought? It hasn't been decided, but that's the discussion. Yeah, it, 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 just, just so you know, I mean, my own personal view is of the library, because if that fails, you know, to consider in this plan maybe an opportunity for the library to be a part of the larger picture comprised within Gates Middle School. And that may open up the library building into another potential building. I don't know. But I mean, at this point, you know, at this point, the whole theory is they're looking for at least $2 million from the town, minimum, could be more. And I don't know if that's going to win or, or lose at a pulse. We'll, we'll have to find that out. But this plan in and of itself should have at least an option for maybe if the library to be a component of the Gates bigger plan or not. I mean, but my feeling is it should. That, that the library will come to the town or to the select um, for a $2 million um, right. assistance that may or may not pass. Correct. And then there would be a step two. So the, the vote, step two meaning that maybe it would be incorporated into the whole big picture. Well, that's what we're going to have to decide. My preference, personal preference is, is to have it as another option, to have it go into the bigger plan. But if it doesn't, if it, if it passes, it passes. That's going to be the voters of the situate, town of Situate to decide that not the board. Um, so it either can be a part of the plan or it doesn't have to be a part of the plan. I think it should be a part of the plan as an option in the event that the their plan, as presently proposed, does not gain the necessary or requisite um, um, support. We'll see. Sir, and then you may have Yeah, uh, Jeff, uh, uh, yeah. Other, than, other than the MSBA funding that you received for the, for the project of the school, are there any other federal or state grant programs funding mechanisms that were provided with any of the other buildings you've done? No, right again, we bypassed uh, the, uh, the senior center, um, and it was a good thing because we got a much better product. Um, there wasn't so, Those days are long gone. Uh, okay. Ma'am? Yes, uh, I know you don't want to talk about the financial end of it, but I want to know approximately what your impact in Franklin was after doing this, because all these people that are here are going to be affected financially. And I know that's something that they're going to be thinking about, and a lot of the townspeople are going to be thinking about <coughs> that, too. Um, I know that I heard recently that the next town over, Norwell, had an increase in the taxes of $900. And on the radio, one of the women I was talking to heard when somebody elderly, like myself, who's on a fixed income, um, was told, well, if you don't like the $900 increase, then move out of the town. And I hope that's not going to be a situate feeling, because that's what I find is an attitude. There are a lot of us that cannot afford a major increase in our taxes. And I also want to say at this time, I am looking into, from other towns, seeing if the senior center can't be privately funded and in a separate building, not in a building connected to somebody else, that if they don't have room, they move us out a little. Um, supposedly, there's land there that was donated for the senior center. I've heard recently there isn't, but I think that's something that we have to look at. So your first concern, obviously, is the financial impact of whatever the plan is. Yes. And the second issue is, can a senior center be privately funded? Well, absolutely can, but whether you can sustain that or not is if it's a separate issue. But um, Well, the town helps with other different um, organizations right. and in sustaining it and keeping it going, I should think the town should at least give something to the seniors 
We built this town. <laughs> Not the other people. We built it. And it's our money that went into all the schools and everything else that's in this town. I've only been here 47 years, but in that 47 years, I put my hard-earned money into making sure that the schools were good and everything else. And when I see what is going on with the seniors, I'm very disappointed because it's, there's no backing. And if it wasn't for us, none of you people up there except Joe <laughs> would be sitting there. It goes back. At 47 years, you still a newcomer? <laughs> no. I, it turns out that my history goes back to um, Plymouth and it moved to situate. So. Okay. And my husband's been here a lot longer, and I won't say who I So, Mike, you know, was just to wrap up your point, they're proposing to integrate um, a, the senior center in a wing or a portion thereof of, of the gate school, and are you suggesting to also look at a separate location? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes because I understand that there is a, a town on the South Shore that it is with the town hall, and it's not working out. Well, I can, I can tell you, we, we looked at the models when we went to our senior center, and some of those work fine, some of them don't work fine, and every community is a little different. So if you look at it for research, um, do a much broader uh, um, search, because we did find some that it worked great, and others, um, they struggled. So that's an uh, open-ended question. Can I ask a second question? I don't want to take any time uh, away. Ready? Go. Yes, go ahead. You mentioned that in Franklin, um, your population all of a sudden went from 20 to 30,000. In what period? Of About 11 years. Okay. So I have the census. I did to do a project. Yeah. But I, I have the census from 2000. <coughs> and and situ it was 17,800, I think it was. And, yeah. and yeah. This is 2012, and I think the last census was recorded in 10, of around 18,000. So our growth certainly didn't take that kind of a jump no. over yeah. that period of time. And Frankly, that concerns me. Uh, it just uh, is what aging infrastructure. Ours was both aging infrastructure and right. there's not enough space. That's one of the things that concerns me because it doesn't seem that our numbers are jumping to uh, help absorb some of these other costs. For some well, reason, let me just tell you something. Let me just tell you that more people is a financial loser. Okay. Well, they have more need. Okay, but I'm, I'm just saying we added 3,000 kids to our school system. Okay, and every time a kid moves in, we lose about ten thousand yeah. dollars. So. Uh, you better off being nice and slow growing um, from that perspective. <coughs> and well, I have ideas? Yes, sir. Yeah. I have a question for the Board of Selectmen. Uh, <coughs> doesn't the uh, town still have a public building commission committee? I thought it's something that's required by charter. Maybe they should be the ones that do the initial planning uh, of the projects. Review all the existing reports, <coughs> take a look at them all, and see if you can get anything out of them, and then put together an overall concept and then present it to a group like this, where, which looks like we're all over the place right now. Uh, not a bad idea at all, Anthony. We could take, uh, ask the Public Buildings Commission to do some research to look at those files and those reports that you're uh, referring to. Uh, let them go through them and, and they're experts in that area and let them come up with whatever ideas they, they, they can get out of it. And I'll be glad to serve on that committee. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Tony spoke. Tony's on it. He spoke Most people here perceive that there's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> you need a senior center, you need a right place, you need a new yes. policing buyer. Yeah. So it's not a debate about whether we need it, it's where, when, how, and how it gets paid for. Yes. Right. Yes. Is that a fair yeah. word for what words yeah. folks follow yeah. about? Yeah. The, the issue is we need to re we need to do something, because otherwise the buildings crumble, the kids don't get a good place, the seniors don't get a, a nice place, etc. Okay. Um, I, I think the summary that you, with the succinctness was great. Um, I think for me, 
it's the jumbleness of all these big projects and where does something something um, that can be possibly um, <coughs> discrete, something smaller like the, uh, that can be pulled out or unwoven like the rec center or like the se um, senior center, how can those be pulled out so maybe they can be placed somewhere while you're dealing with, um, and I don't know if it's possible, yeah. <laughs> but while you're dealing with the school system, which when you make one decision, it affects K through 12. And I'm not sure how that can be wrestled with, but I think in fairness to those separate interests and populations, it needs to be. So somehow in the planning, we can include that. So, so I think that would be really important. We say that <coughs> under this plan, uh, or at least the, the initial proposal, yeah. those folks are all clumped together. Yes. Okay. And what you were suggesting is to pull them apart? I think we or need to, when you talk about K through 12, right. and you talk about all the municipal programs or a certain, um, the town, <coughs> police, fire, water, we know there's a major shifting. There's a lot of shifting that's going to happen possibly new buildings, but if you can take, and it's going to be multiple years, pro programs and centers have moved from one building to another in a period of those 10 years. So somehow we can isolate the smaller workings, the rec program, something that's square, pull it out, let's put it somewhere, let them go, let them flourish, instead of holding them in purgatory, so to speak, Senior center, let's pull it out, let it flourish. And then where you have your K through 12s, where you have your police and fire, where you have your water department, and of course we're growing, where those are all clumped together, then we also at the same time parallel and tackle those. So even if you did that, I think the intent of the selectman though is not to say in year one we'll go get four million for this, and six million for this because I think the idea is to let the citizen know what's the all-in cost um, if we're going to do like, whether they're going to be separate facilities or integrated facilities letting everybody in the community know if we, if we resolve the library the senior center the rec the school please what's the cost how am I going to pay for it how does it impact me as a taxpayer versus you know taking them one at a time <coughs> maybe see may seem easier, but sure. in the big scheme, this one fails, this one passes, this one fails, this one passes. Right. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Just so that, I mean, I hope that you're on that's, that's not correct. what I'm saying. Right. Because I think there's, the K through 12 is huge. The police department and water are huge. Whereas if you pull just the rec well, box or just the senior the box, they can be shifted for if four years pull, or. If you pull the rec, you're going to have a facility, right? <coughs> Following one. that, I'd like to talk about a facility. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I read in the paper where Wellesley bought the church that was closed, St. James, right. and it's going to be a wreck facility. I have no idea whether that's something we can do, but at least somebody did it. We do have a church that's empty. Has anybody looked into? Don't. Okay. Uh, Jamie Gilmore from the west end of town. Um, I, I, I'm, I've been listening to everybody, and uh, I think I need to remind you all, the idea of piecemealing, let's just take care of our friends in the senior center, or let's take care of a rec center issue. The, the reality is, in all the plans that are in the archives, the reality is our town has tried to do that for the last 40 years, and look where we are. The piecemealing concept will occur again after we come up with what the big price tag is. We're on a milestone issue here where we know we have to do a lot of things. Let's get the big dollar value, whatever it is, and, and I sympathize with, with the, the situation of wanting to know how it's going to impact your own individual wallet. But tonight we should all be inclusive rather than exclusive. We should put some of the wounds of the past behind us and look forward to the concept, is there an appetite? Of course there's an appetite. Let's find out what the whole picture is. Know full well that this is a skeletal kind of a layout deal that, that is informed. People have been talking about it. Everybody's got an interest there. 
and let the 375 be spent, go forward, we're gonna spend it anyways, but let it go forward, come up with a more defined plan, listen to everybody, review the old documents, but know that the priorities that you're talking about, they can't happen until we decide are we gonna spend 20 million, 55 million, 120 million? What did Franklin spend in your eight years? Go ahead, put it out there. Yeah. I'm gonna add it all up. Uh, schools were third, we did two schools were 33 and 25, and then another state 36 on all the other facilities. Yeah, yeah. and, and so, so somewhere there, that's what we're talking about. On the front page of your, the front page of your, uh, of the document tonight, it talks about the capital. Just wait, we don't know that. We don't know that. The school, the schools were about 60 million, the state paid 69% back then. Yeah. Back when the old MSBA had a different formula. So, and then the other, the, 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 the senior center was six million, the fire station was nine, the DPW was 10, the town hall was six, the recreation was five, they had all those up. That was like 36 or 37 million. Yeah. So that's, that's and where that we the ball is when construction was less. Yeah. 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 But that's 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 what we have to we have to support the educated approach to get to a price tag that one that we can all feel good about that isn't too crazy but isn't going to deprive any one of these interests and then we can go through and some things may occur faster. I mean, there's some very complex structures like I would imagine the public safety structure very complex a lot of work in there. Rec center, maybe not so, maybe not so uh, intense. Uh, senior center, maybe not so intricate. But so those priorities would come after, that's all. And I think we should kind of put some of the bygones and the wounds behind us. Otherwise, we're gonna continue to piecemeal ourselves to nothingness. That's my opinion. Uh, I just wanted to make another point. My, my initial point about looking for a different place to put the middle school, um, I think was really coupled with an overall point I want to make about looking also for economic development for our town. He asked the question in Franklin, the answer was you're about 80% from residential taxes and 20% from business. Right. In Situate, we're about 97.3. Okay. We need, we don't have the population growth, that's the other point. We need to be looking for ways to support this um, in our economic growth. And, I think the, the prime real estate right there, you know, you hear a lot of things in this town about we don't want to develop 3i, we like our greenway. Well, I think it's about time we start looking to understand these are things we might have to, to look into and do it nicely. I mean, certainly we can have the right zoning and the right planning to have the right businesses there, but the great thing about the town hall location is that it's already developed. You're not cutting down trees to put in a nice business complex or something like that. So I just feel like that's another ideal piece of, and it moves things along a lot faster, which we also need to do. Good. Talking about economic development, back in the 90s, the Situate Chamber of Commerce suggested that possibly we could take some land across from uh, Haley, uh, Henry Trina Bailey Causeway, which uh, goes back quite a distance. There's an awful lot of land back there. And the Chamber of Commerce spent quite a bit of time going through there, looking at who bought, who owned the properties, how the properties might be joined together still to save the conservation properties were up there. And it was actually a very, very good plan because it would have developed an entire business zone up into that area and not take anything along 3A and do what Cohasset has done. Now one of the things that Situate and Marshfield to a great extent enjoy is the fact that you can drive down that road without running into gas stations, uh, stop, uh, supermarkets and, and whatever. It's one of the best parts of Situate. So part of the, I, I so the point is that the economic development was researched by the chamber, had very many meetings with the selectmen back at that time, and it just died. So here's the issue, I think. Any plan is going to have to have a financing plan. 
it might have many components to it. Um, and if I, you can't have the financing plan until you know what the costs are. That has okay. to do with and finance. so whether that's selling some property and using that, that was you know, because when you sell public property, it can only be used for something you can borrow for. So you can't sell property and spend it on operational expenses. You can only put it back in the buildings. That's a statutory requirement. So whether it's selling building or creating more revenue by using land, uh, doesn't happen overnight, but it certainly, you know, if you're looking at a, at a long term plan, that could help offset the cost. Other questions, comments, ideas, suggestions? I just, I just, I'll, I think I'll explain yours a little bit better. I think that's a very good component that both of you are talking about, is finding a way to increase our commercial base in areas of town that aren't, you know, necessarily green or these, uh, you know, environmentally sensitive areas that we found in town. And I think you're pointing to the piece that's right up against Cohasset that really isn't right in the heat of things, and you're talking about a piece of property that is already developed. And I think those are great ideas. I think uh, you know that has to be in consideration of what we're talking about. And one other thing also, I was talking about the senior center. If I remember three or four years ago, we spent an awful lot of time, uh, an awful lot of time, developing the senior center adjacent to the, uh, the old elementary school, which is now housing for the Elton. And it was about that close to passing at that time, uh, except for a few things that occurred that, that caused it actually to lose uh, ground in town meeting. We have plans for senior center, approximately three years old. We have the land, which has been surveyed. Um, it is <coughs> has the building on it. The building was, uh, I think, I so it So is your suggestion that that be part of the mix? It was about a million and a half dollars at the time. <coughs> to the building? Yes. How big was it? That's so what the town meeting was. I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. It was a fairly large, okay. excuse me? 2004 was 1.4 million. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. the, the plan was changed uh, <coughs> to try to get its cost down. And it was approximately, I would say, between a million and a half and two million dollars. So, so, um, that's way more than that. You think that should be more than three million? Is it? Well, I mean, you talk about putting two, three, this three, all into this big package, which is one, very yeah. hard to, to comprehend. It's one, probably going to get more very confusing. Now, because you're talking about putting it all into a big pot. Oh no, I mean, no, listen to me. You're talking about putting it into a big pot and <laughs> then saying, what do you mean by that? What big pot? This, you've got to put together a plan Correct. that proposes all of these buildings. Mm -hmm. And no one is going to go to town meeting. And you've got to be a fool to think so. And say, we're going to do it all at once. Even though it might take two or three years to do each one. <laughs> you only going to pick the one that makes the most sense, if possible. Now, at the plan? time, at the time, we could now have a senior center. But you just told me that people didn't vote for it. Yes. And what makes you think they're going to vote for this? I didn't say. I don't live here. I don't vote. I think the idea is that you know what everybody deserves, you know, equal treatment. Absolutely. Seniors, you know, they help build the town. No, I didn't see it on this list. I didn't see it on this list that was passed. No, it's on the list. Oh, it's on the back. Oh, I didn't know there were two pages. Is that we have existing plans? We have some existing site work that's been done. As long as it's incorporated, if it can be in the new plan, I think that's all. Maybe then you're asking, is that be considered instead of? completely moving it for the site, spending money on something that we've already spent money on. You know, I don't know how, many, how many years it was ago, or three years. Three years. About three years. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. What's the time frame before this master plan will be put to a vote? Like, I mean, does this take six months, a year, two years? Like, if we all walk out of here and say, okay, we're agree with the master plan, 
I mean, how long before we even vote on it at town hall? Do we know? I think ideally we'd, we'd like to get moving within a year. So that's the next time we can get the studies done with that 375, so yeah. you come back so we can no, vote on it by that. But we can't yeah, even no. spend the 375 until July 1st. Right. So we're we're trying. That's why we're meeting now. And we're going to meet again to try and get this moving on a faster track as opposed to a slower one. Knowing, and I think people, you know, once you get your plan together, as Jeff was saying, it's all going to be staged. You know, you, you, something's going to be done first and something's going to be done last. And that's where you get the engineers to come in and say, okay, well, this makes sense to do first. You get most bang your buck by doing the second and so forth and so on. But in terms of the, the time frame, we want to do it quickly. We want to see if the town's going to get behind it and support it both uh, conceptually and financially. And if not, then we've got a whole nother, a whole nother uh, set of issues we have to deal with. Every one of these buildings that we're talking about replacing are in dire need of repair. So the payments that you're not gonna be making towards the principle of putting a new building in, you're gonna be putting into building, fixing walls and air conditioning units and putting more storage space and, and all these other issues. That's the next idea of what you're gonna to have to start dealing with in terms, I can't even go on the gates of, of what has to be done there. I know Brenda's got her hand up on it. I've got a list of 100 things. Um, you know, that's plan B. If, if we don't go on doing things new, then we've got to start going, as Jimmy mentioned, into the piecemeal thing that we've been doing. Put a Band-Aid here, put a Band-Aid there, fix this, do this. It's going to cost money, too. That leads me to the question. That leads me to the question of, okay, if not this, then what's the alternative? What's the financial exposure we're going to have, whether we do this or whether we don't? What's that? Well, we're not even going down there because we're well, optimistic, it right? Is. Our plan, right. and that's what people want. I mean, people want, everyone here has, you know, we could have a poll right now. Who wants gates? Half the people. Who wants senior set? You know, everybody can do it. That's not what we're doing. We're saying, here's the plan that's best for the town, and it's everything. And we're not going to even say, okay, well, if this doesn't work, if you wait another year, you can get a senior center. You know, that's not what we're doing. This is what the plan is. All the buildings are in need of repair, and that's what we're focusing on in terms of what is the cost of that going to be, what's the time frame of that going to be, and can we implement it? And so, you know, part of the issue is that there's a consensus. They'll do an RFP to get an engineer architect on board. They'll be able to give you an estimated cost um, by doing a, the, the, the study over the next six or nine months. Um, you, you should have something by next spring if you got it. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I have a question. Wasn't there any sort of a plan put together uh, for the 375? Wasn't any plan put together for the 375,000 that was voted? What, did we just take that out of midair? Do you have some idea no, what you were going to use it for? No, they appropriated the funds with the idea of doing what exactly they Where did they come up with the price? Uh, what did they come up with the price? Yeah. 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 Just yes, that is? Yes. Educated guess. Just a wild guess. It might be more. No, but it's it, not it, a we wild knew, guess. So we it voted an for estimate. We voted 375 for what? For well, what? Because ultimately, if you're going to need um, a schematic design or a cost estimate for an X thousand square foot building, you want to know what it's going to cost. Do you think they should have done that before they went to town meeting? Well, then they'd have to get money to pay for it. So it's a chicken and egg. Yeah. <laughs> this is for the selectmen. We're talking all these big bucks. What about this building? What is going to happen to this building? Has any decision been made? No. No final decision. No. No decision has been made. And how long the last <laughs> before a decision is made? <laughs> we hope to be making a decision soon. I'd like to make two points. I guess first is that any responsible master plan is going to have a schedule of priorities which projects should go first according to input from the town and a time frame when that can happen. And it's going to be tied to things like borrowing costs, tax rates, when debt's retired, when new debt is taken on, that's all going to be on the table to be discussed uh, once the master plan is done. It's not just a bunch of plans for buildings and the potential costs, and you don't know, have to accept the whole thing uh, as it lies. Um, it should show you exactly 
what the impact is going to be on your taxes, your your home, your time schedule, who works, and things like a senior center. Uh, it's relevant part of the plan. Um, the second point I'd like to make is that Gates is the linchpin, and maybe that's already been said. I was afraid to get here from town. Gates is the linchpin to everything, um, it seems to me. And Gates is the one component of the master plan that's got a state program that's going to finance half of it, or approximately 50%. The program's in place, the rules are there, the forms are ready to be filled out. Um, you know, you can go forward with that on solid ground. It's not, it's not maybe uh, something where we get the money to do the library. That might be the last one the library commissioners program, but maybe it isn't. For the senior center, there's no parent financing um, program to help out with the senior center. Uh, but for Gates, there is. You know, a new school or even a major renovation addition to the existing one is going to get state funding without a doubt. So that's just something to think of. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. I thought that, um, that the seniors need a center right now, and most of us are not going to be here by the time. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So you really can't uh, expect seniors to vote for something that is supposed to be for them and they're not going to be here to be able to appreciate it. So I just can't see why the senior center has to be a part of that complex and why uh, what we would like to do, as you all know, is to be located right here. But that doesn't seem to be agreeable there's a deed restriction on the property that doesn't allow it. So what? There's a deed restriction on this property. That's what I've been told. We're community now. This is community. What does it actually say? Does anyone know what it actually says? It's going to be a lot more seniors coming along. Yeah, I just want to ask. I know. I, I think before before we leave that just, just this building is and has been available for the seniors so we all know that I hope I mean the seniors can come down here whatever programs they want that aren't su suitable for the Brook Street site can come down here get the time work their Wednesday programs or their Friday here that's I hope we all understand that well, and that should be going on, on now. That's only on a basis of... Uh, it's on a basis right now, exactly. So, I'm glad, glad I'm sorry. I just okay. wanted to make that clear. Do, do, do we have the language? What is the exact restriction says? Not in front of I don't, have, I don't, I don't have the language, but I can paraphrase it. And okay. I know that Ed DeSalvio's here, who was a part of the um, uh, Pier 44 committee, who spent extensive amount of time going over it. Um, and Ed, correct me if I'm wrong. But to paraphrase it, the MBTA said this property could be used for open space, recreation, and educational. The difficulty we have as a town is to try to put or locate a municipal purpose or use here, use being like recreation, council on aging, building department, school. It has to meet those requirements of open space, recreation, and um, education. So we are, shall we say, hemmed in to deal with it in that restriction. All three. All three. It has to be public accessible building. So, Ed, did I state that, paraphrase it? I don't have the exact language because I don't have the agreement from me. Clarity, the community center does fit in with those restrictions. It falls in with the educational and recreational components. And also, just so that if anybody wants to know where it is, it's on the town website. So you can you can locate it there and read it for yourselves if you think I'm misstating it. So, so I guess I'm not clear on to, to what Joe says. The seniors could use this facility. They just can't own it. I, I believe, I hope, it. I hope they're using it now. I, it, it's been open, it's been yes. offered to them. It's, we can't, we can't take it down to Barman and but put it in this building. Yeah. 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 Ye
And they, they're using it now, I guess that's... Okay, I'll just... I'm not prepared tonight. I can answer some questions, but I have approached the selectmen at the last selectmen's meeting to be put on the agenda to have to state a proposal for the use of this building. And I was told that by Mr. Norton that I needed to follow certain steps, which I have done and done the application. There are uses, and, and the senior center can be. Um, utilized here according to the MBTA um, the mitigation commission uh, and the real estate division but I, I think what's one of the issues here is an immediate issue for the seniors and your total picture which still may include a senior facility at the gates um, area and and maybe it'll be twice the size of this and the senior population would need it in eight years i think that there's two issues and one is that we talk about the whole plan that that you have put forth or that you're putting forth and the other which i hope <coughs> i was told that i'm going to be on the agenda at a selectman's meeting before a decision is made on the use of this building okay. so that that can be addressed so that we don't That's have it. to go back so, and forth. So, but so, we can do so you can do that you know with the selectmen and you're right they're not exclusive on one another you have right. that discussion and you still have this discussion at the same time right that's, a good I, that's what i'm saying okay. i don't think it's okay someone up back in the yes sir um has anybody talked to senator henland and representative cantwell and said Maybe we could use a little bit of help of the state house and tell the MBTA that they can change their restrictions to eliminate some of this. Okay, too. that's all right, but you know, you know, they give this. I don't know the least print. He said maybe someone uh, uh, there could be some political help to resolve the, the uh, restriction issue. So I think this, uh, this there may be, um, may, may be real or perceived. I think if everybody gets in the same room and said, "What is the, the actual document say?" What does the town attorney say? Maybe you can clear all the issues up one way or the other. Again, I don't have a, I don't know, I have a game, but people want the facts. I have, a, I have an answer. Yeah, yes, sir. Why don't we just let the senior center use it? Just don't put a sign on the door. Well, apparently they can use it a couple of days a week right now if they like to use it. Is that a question? Okay. How about uh, just to use it? Yeah? This mm -hmm. you know, says that the senior center was built in 1922. Mm -hmm. It was actually built in 1847. Okay, it's one room. That's right. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to switch the, the topic a little bit. Um, since we're deciding which building from a school perspective that we want to do, whether it's a middle school or a high school, we have a brand new superintendent. And I didn't know if there's been an opportunity or if there's a meeting on the docket to meet with the new school committee, the new superintendent, um, to get his educational input as to where he may feel looking at education 15, 20 years down the road, where our money will be best spent. Once, as we said earlier tonight, we've started this process now. Very shortly, we would hope uh, to sit down with the superintendent and the school committee and the group and just Part of the part of brainstorm, part of the next step of steps. Right. 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 So. Whatever you do, that's the biggest expense. Right. So you, you want to get it right, and you want to make sure you're exactly we were going to be 20, 30 years from now. The only thing I'd add is we are not going to make the decision in terms of what the school model should be. That's way out of our realm. That's, they would go and say, this is what we think is the best and blah, 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 not, not us. Right. And, and that's great, and that's why I bring up the, uh, the anchoring where town hall is compared to what you know, they want to do, just to be clear that that piece probably is a moving piece of your plan. That's right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, they all know me. I'm Dale Baylon. I'm on the board of directors for the SCOA. And I just want to clarify that, yes, it's wonderful 
that we can make use of this facility. But if you look at the, the title, Senior Center, the word center means bringing people together, usually in the same place at the same time, or having that opportunity. So by being able to use this building for various activities, it's not bringing the seniors together. It's giving us an opportunity for more space. But I just want you to all keep in mind the word center. And the seniors do deserve to have a place to call their own. You don't send the kids from Jenkins over to the high school to use six of their classrooms because Jenkins might be too small. It's, it's, I'm just trying to make an analogy. So I, I had to bring them back to the senior center. We act, just a quick comment. Just, and I know I speak for everybody here. First of all, we have done that. We have taken kids from one school and shipped them to another school because of space. Um, but <clears throat> I know I speak for all of us. Someone said Gates is the linchpin of this. That's not necessarily true. We are all aware of what the senior center looks like and what the needs are there. And that's just as important as any other building in town. So we're, the senior center has to be dealt with. There's no doubt in our mind that in whatever the time period is, three or five years, that's not going to be the senior center. There's going to be a new facility <laughs> somewhere. Um, I don't know where it is. It may be in Gates. It may be a new building behind the library. Um, I don't know, maybe here, who knows? But that our part of our plan is getting the senior center improved from the condition that it is now. None of us think that that building is adequate or that it's um, is a long-term solution for that. I, is that pretty safe to say? Oh, yeah. Rick's not here, but uh, I, at least the other four. Um, I agree, but I, I'm, I'm a senior myself, and um, I was just wondering, I hope I don't get a stack, but why couldn't the seniors are at the center nine to three right that's their time so that's 30 hours a week why couldn't this building be used at that time for the seniors and then perhaps later on in the day maybe four to seven let's get the kids here i mean you know no texting wait just let me finish and uh you know have them get into a group of maybe uh learning how to play chess or something really educational. So you're gonna get that component. I mean, and maybe some of us here would be happy to even be a volunteer during that time. And then also give this to different, uh, different organizations in the town where we can, whether you're a, you know, if you're a, if you're a resident, you'll get one prize, but if you're non-resident, and this could generate money. I mean, you could have a wedding here if you use another hall, they charge you $500, where it could generate money. So now you've got seniors, kids, and the community so I'm, while we're doing all of this. Well, so, but to me, that goes to an operational issue in the short run, yep. which is, I think, what they're going to talk about in the near future for a selective mm -hmm. meeting, if I'm correct. Right. So mm -hmm. one's the short term. What is there any short term venue that could help out while we're trying to tackle the right. long term? Right. So I think you need to do uh, uh, show up at the meeting uh, for that because maybe there's a potential there. Sir? Yeah. Um, I, first, I want to uh, commend the Board of Selectmen for putting together a facilities master plan that seems to have been attempted in the past and is long overdue. Um, I've only been here nine years. The newest building is the Jenkins since I've been here. Um, the, the building before that, I think, was the library. So we're dealing with almost 40 years, 30, 40 years of patching and painting and band-aids. And you know what, you know, pay you now, you pay me later. I mean, you change your oil or, or you don't. And we're kind of at that point, facilities-wise, where stuff has to be dealt with. And should it have been dealt with in the last 40 years and spread out over time? Well, hindsight is always 2020. Yeah, of course. Can't do it now, it's too late. These buildings are old. And I think it's a great start. I mean, you gotta start somewhere. And we've heard a lot of input from people as far as what their priorities are and, and there's a lot to digest. Um, what have other, have, have there been other towns in this position, such as Franklin? I think this is a great example of, 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 of inviting this gentleman here to tell us about his experiences, how he dealt with. And I think the easy part's gonna be putting together 
the, the facilities plan. The hard part is going to be try to explain it to people and get them to buy into it. That's going to be where your efforts going to have to go. Anyone, I mean, I'm in the building business, and developers do this stuff, and they put together a sequence. That's going to be the easy part, based on existing facilities, the conditions of those buildings, and so on. The, the sale is going to be the hard part, and explaining it to people so they understand it is going to be the hard part. Um, the other, one more obligation, um, but these buildings, I'm in the, as I said, I'm in the building business. Um, there is an obligation under the ADA that all programs, activities, and services offered by the town are usable by persons with disabilities. Most of the bill, I mean, town hall has sort of a ramp. There's no public bathroom in there. This building we looked at, it's actually pretty good in that regard. So that has to be part of the consideration as well, is to bring all those buildings up to ADA, current ADA standards to meet the Title II obligations. And that's a gotta do. That's a gotta do, there's no question. Uh, because I think what the selectmen are looking for is, you know, out of this begin the process of, you know, engaging someone to do uh, a feasibility and get some process and it's work with the school folks to see exactly what their needs are, um, you know, whether we're going to renovate the gates or build the middle school, how all that works. Do you have a timeline to meet with the school folks? Uh, I, I would say after uh, after July first, after July first, uh, July second, definitely. Uh, the purpose of this meeting tonight was to, to gather input from everybody here, uh, good, bad, good suggestions, uh, whatever. Uh, after that input was was gathered by us, our intention would be to digest it, to go over it, share it with the schools. Uh, and decide whether we go forward. I mean, if, 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 uh, if this room was, was full of people saying, this is absolutely crazy, the, build, the, the buildings are all in wonderful shape, we don't need to do anything, and that was the unanimous uh, feeling in this room, that may be the end of this whole idea. But certainly, that wasn't the impression I don't think we got, or I don't think that's the impression that you wanted to give us. We recognize as Tony well put, Senior centers, every building in town needs help. Uh, we have to do something, we have to do something soon. Uh, we're gonna digest everything that was said, uh, everything that was written down. Maybe it's, look at some different locations, look at the older plans that were put forward years ago that for whatever reason didn't go anywhere. Maybe they're still very viable, maybe they're not. We'll take a look at them, have public buildings look at them. Uh, and come back in a, hopefully a short period of time because we want to get this done. We want these buildings approved uh, faster than anybody in this room. We, we recognize the need for it. Uh, come back with a more definite plan with some different ideas and hopefully the feeling of the townspeople going forward to be, would be go ahead and, and, and let's take go to the next step. So that's the purpose of the meeting. I hope we, we get that tonight, I think we did. I felt we did. We get uh, ideas, both, as I said, both good and bad. We'll take them all into consideration. They're, they're all legitimate. Everything was said was, was legitimate and, and well thought out. We thank you for that. And if there's nothing else, thank you all for coming. Thank you.